بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of uh, Islamic Awakening presented by MBTV and we have a very distinguished uh, learner scholar with us from South Africa Mufti uh, Shafiq Ahmad Jakura Welcome to this show again and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In the past episodes uh, we were talking about uh, ibadat and then uh, akhlaqiyat and muamalat and uh, itaqadiyat all these areas of five areas of Islam. So we have come to the, you know, bit of detail about Islamic finance as, well, as such. So uh, shall we uh, summarize what we have already said about Islamic finance and banking and takaful and all that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace and salutations be upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, uh, it's always nice to summarize yes. at the end of the program and seeing that this is the last episode. It's a good idea to, uh, to, to, to just uh, summarize and uh, understand what we have discussed so that we can get it in a little gist. Basically, uh, what we have discussed was, uh, from the beginning, we discussed what Sharia was. Right. Uh, we discussed uh, where uh, it comes about. The very fact that Sharia refers to divine law. Because humans are lacking. Uh, because yeah. humans are lacking. Yeah. We, need some, uh, we need guidance. Who better to guide us than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If we buy uh, a Mercedes-Benz, then because the company Mercedes-Benz has made the car, they are in the best position to guide us with regards to how to use that car, how to service that car, what to do with the that manual, car. Huh? The manual. The manual. Okay. Uh, if we buy a Singer machine, yeah. then Singer is the best uh, uh, company to tell us how to use that Singer yeah. machine. Service it. Yeah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us, right. then uh, uh, we have to listen to his manual. Right. And his manual is the Holy Quran, the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is basically what, uh, what the Sharia is. Right. We didn't discuss uh, in detail about what constitutes the Sharia. Right. By and large, uh, the Sharia, uh, we understand that it is the Quran and the Sunnah. Right, fundamental sources of Sharia. Fundamental sources of the Sharia. But there are two other sources of the Sharia that are also very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the primary source, like we mentioned, is the Holy Quran. Then it is the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then there is a third source of the Sharia which refers to, a, uh, which is Ijma. Ijma means the consensus of the scholars on a particular issue. Right. And this is also a very vital uh, source of the Sharia. Uh -huh. uh, people ask, how is that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that Lan ummati ala mm -hmm. My ummah will never ever uh, reach together. a consensus upon something that is incorrect. So when the Ummah, and the Ummah here refers to the scholars of the Ummah. Right, right. When the scholars of the Ummah reach a consensus about something, then it means that it is yes. correct. Right, okay. So that is a source of the Sharia. Ah. And when we spoke about Iofi, mm -hmm. Iofi, all of those scholars from different, uh, countries. Uh, different countries, from different schools of thought, thought, when they reach a consensus upon something, that then that be. is a type of ijma right. that is reached. Right. So that is a source of the Sharia. And the fourth source of the Sharia is ijtihad and qiyas, yes. uh, you know, analogical reasoning, mm -hmm. where we don't find a clear-cut ruling about something in the Holy Quran, the Sunnah, neither have the scholars uh, reached a consensus about it. Then uh, uh, a jurist or a group of ulama, mm. jurists, will sit down, apply their minds, exert themselves and try and extract the ruling. Uh, that the, the will apply the, to the, the principle, situation. Principles, the basic principles will be there in the Quran. Yes. In the new case, we just... In a, in a, in a, a, you have to yes. apply those reasonings yeah. now. Those Based principles. on the new development. That is yes. right. Okay. That is right. Therefore, you will find that Islam has got a solution to every issue. Right. Uh, even though it's a new issue. Right. It just came up. But uh, there are principal guidelines for us to guide us right until the day of Qiyamah. So right. we discussed that right. uh, as far as the program was concerned. What was Sharia? Yeah. We discussed uh, the sources of the Sharia. Ah. Uh, as far as Islamic banking and finance is concerned, comes we under discussed. Mu yes, it comes under Mu'amalat, uh, which, uh, which has been neglected. 
-hmm. for far too long and we've regarded it to be not part of deen, whereas it is very much part of our deen right. and Islam and Sharia. We discussed the importance that of that. That is perhaps the misconception the Muslims have. For example, a uh, Muslim country, let's say 100% Muslim population. Uh, although we are forced or you know, some kind of, by chance, we, we have the conventional banking and ins conventional insurance. Do you think uh, actually Muslims should be uh, dealing with that? Look, when there is uh, Islamic finance available, uh, first of all, uh, conventional uh, banks that are based on interest, those are not permissible at all. So for a Muslim to deal with them, for a Muslim to take a veil of finance for them, he is inviting the curse, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon himself. Yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that لَعَنَ اللَّهُ آكِلَ الرِّبَا وَمُوكِلَهُ وَكَاتِبَهُ وَشَاهِدَيْهِ وَقَالَهُمْ سَوَا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May the curse of Allah be upon the one who takes interest, who gives interest, the one who signs as a witness on that transaction, uh, and the one who writes the transaction. And he said all of them are equal in sin. So it's so uh, serious. Yeah? So it's a very, very serious thing. So as far as that is concerned, it's... Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, with regards to our mu'amalat, mm -hmm. it's so important, if you, just to give you a little idea, right. uh, if you have to understand that... Uh, one of the things which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned mm -hmm. on the day of Qiyamah, uh, one particular hadith, he says that the feet of mankind will not move from their place on the day of judgment until they are asked five questions. Right. Of those five questions, two questions. It means 40% of the questions. Right. Two questions out of five means 40%. Right. 40% of the questions are about your mu'amalat. عن ماله من أين نكتسب وفي ما أنفق about your wealth where did you earn it from how did you spend it so this is a serious matter and you know as they say we you are what you eat if you are going to eat things that are haram things that are doubtful then the actions that are going to emanate from our bodies also are going to be incorrect actions and if we are going to eat things that are halal not doubtful, mm. uh, then the actions that are going to emanate from our bodies also will be wholesome, will be, uh, will be, uh, you know, beloved to Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala. Can, can I add something on that? Like, you, let's say Muslims, we pray and the fast and zakat and hajj and all that, but the mu'amalat is already totally on the wrong track. So how does we, it balance up and we can't really... It doesn't balance up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's very important to become, in one verse of the Quran Sharif, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Udkhulu fi silmi kafa Enter into Islam completely Not 50-50 Not 50-50 Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said A man is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's saying Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi He's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the food that he has eaten is haram It is doubtful The water that is in his belly is haram, doubtful The clothes that are on his body is haram and doubtful uh, so, how is such a person's dua going to be accepted? Okay, um, Mufti uh, Jakura, now we, we spoke about the fundamental sources of Sharia is Quran and Sunnah, and the secondary source is Qiyas and Ijma, Ijma and Qiyas. Now, this analytical uh, the technique of Islamic law, uh, we are taking the illa from the, uh, the if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made something haram in the Quran, it must be haram until the day of judgment. So, how does that apply, for example? Let's say alcohol, for example, is prohibited not because it is made of a particular item, but because the intoxication illa is there. So, under mu'amalat also, how do we apply this illa? Look, as far as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is haram, uh, it is haram because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is haram. Okay, number one. Period. Period. Uh, we don't look at illa and hikmah. Mm. The illa for it being haram in this particular reason, uh, situation where you mentioned the example of alcohol. Mm. In other words, the illa means for the benefit of the viewers, the reason. Mm -hmm. The reason why alcohol is haram mm -hmm. is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Right. The hikmah, uh, uh, the hikmah, the wisdom why it is haram is... Uh, intoxication. It can be, uh, it can be intoxication. Umul uh, a, a number of other things that the fuqaha have mentioned, they've gone into the detail of that. But as far as uh, uh, the illa is concerned, the reason, it is haram because Allah subhanahu okay. wa ta'ala said it is haram. If that is the case, the riba is, the, 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 the illa is because 
Allah made it haram. But the hikmah behind riba is unjust. Can, uh, we, can we say that? You can say that uh, the reason uh, why uh, the illa, why, uh, uh, why, uh, why riba and interest is haram is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it haram and in uh, no in unequivocal terms Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that in the Quran that uh, there were a group of people who used to say uh, the Quran speaks about it that those who take interest they will uh, rise on the day of Qiyamah mm -hmm. uh, like how a mad person rises min al mas dhalika bi annahum qalu innamal bay'u mithlu riba right because they used to say that interest is like or sale of commodities is just like the sale of money there's no difference between the two right uh, so therefore you know some of us sometimes we we we, we uh, there's a lot of criticism against Islamic banking, right? Uh, without actually knowing the facts. Uh, and we say that both are the same. We must be careful when we say the statement because we might be falling into the same category of people who used to say that trade is just like riba. riba. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted trade right. and he has prohibited uh, riba. Right. So he has permitted the sale of assets, mm -hmm. but he has prohibited the sale of money. Uh, right. So actually uh, some people are saying that it is the same thing. They keep on saying the same thing, but it's not the same thing. I would like to give a small example. Let's say this beautiful lamp here. I bought it for $1,000 and uh, somebody want to buy it. And I said, I will sell it $2,500. So I get that extra profit of 500 by selling it. But if somebody came to borrow $1,000 from me, and I say, I will give it to you, but on condition you bring me 1500 next week. He brings the extra 500 How much did I get extra? 500 How much did I extra by selling the lamp? 500 So some people may say the 500 the amount is equal, but the method I got is different. One is by sale. In this case, this is good because the manufacturer of this got the value, the price of it because I bought it from him, he mm. benefits. And then when I sell this, I get my profit and the other get to use the product. So the wealth is created and distributed. But on the other case, when I lend money, because I'm born rich, I just, when a poor person comes, I give the money and take more money from him. So yes. where, that is the unjust and exploit, exploitation. Does it help uh, the others uh, to, to justify what, what, what you're saying? Of course, I think you have been wrestling very carefully during the program. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but this is exactly what it is. It is that not where you are selling an item and you earn a legitimate profit for that, then that is permissible and acceptable. But where you, uh, uh, where you, you just give a loan, then that is not permissible. A simple, simple definition for interest is Kullu qarzin jarra manfa'atan fahuwa riban Every loan that draws a benefit over and above the capital, that is interest. If you have given a loan to someone and you benefit from that, you might benefit in, in, ca in cash or in kind. in kind. Therefore, some fuqaha, although this is not the general fatwa, mm -hmm. but some jurists have mentioned that if I give you a loan, mm -hmm. Right. The, after giving you a loan, it's not even permissible for me to stand in the shade of your wall. Oh my God. Because I'm benefiting from my loan. Oh, yeah. Although this is not, I'm just telling you to the extent, to the extent, the extent. at which uh, right. jurists have gone yes, to, to prohibit uh, riba and interest. Yeah. M M Mufti uh, Jakura, thank you once again. We'll, we'll take a short break and we'll come back to the audience. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for viewing this program and uh, we'll come back after a short break. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Mm.